managing pregnancy in lupus. So when it comes to pregnancy, I think it is a prerogative of every woman, irrespective of whether she is diseased or she is normal. You name any disease, you ask that female, she will be always ready to become a mother. But it is our responsibility to, des to decide whether she can safely carry out the pregnancy or not. And that is where the onus on doctors lie, that we need to learn to manage pregnancy in all chronic as well as acute diseases. So with that introduction, the basic principles of managing pregnancy in lupus are four. Number one, we must remember that a successful pregnancy is possible. So prior to the older thinking that we clinicians used to dissuade the patients from uh, carrying the pregnancy forward. Now, with good drugs, with good understanding of SLE, it is possible to carry a successful pregnancy. But we need to remember that it is possible only if it is properly planned, properly monitored, and properly managed. Second important thing that we need to remember is successful does not mean uneventful. So we must counsel all the patients and the relatives that despite all precautions that we will be taking, there may be some untoward events and there is a chance that we might lose the fetus or might lose the mother. So counseling is very important. At the same time, we must keep in mind all the absolute contraindications, which I'll come later. And what is most important is the disease must be kept under optimal control for at least six months prior to conception. So this is, these are the basic principles. If we keep in mind, probably we will be able to manage all our patients well. So the very important thing is we must remember that SLE may affect fecundity as well as fertility. And the various reasons are most of the SLE patients become mother at a very delayed age because they require some time to get over into disease remission or a drug washout. At the same time, all these ladies have menstrual irregularities due to inflammation, due to disease activity. There are certain corpus luteum antibodies and they have a high circulating FSH. At the same time, these, drug, these ladies might be on drugs which might be gonadotoxic like cyclophosphamide. There may be steroid induced reduced libido. There may be menstrual irregularities. There may be renal failure due to lupus nephritis which cause hyperprolactinemia. There may be antiphospholipid uh, antibody syndrome, which leads to recurrent thrombosis and recurrent fetal loss. And there can be psychosocial problems leading to depression and decreased libido. So all these factors contribute to decreased fertility. So what is important is a preconceptional counseling and assessment, which includes the foremost is to assess the disease activity so that we can ensure a good conception occurs only before the disease uh, is into remission. Second, we must assess the disease burden and the presence of organ involvement, especially the target organs. Look for presence of antiphospholipid antibodies, anti-rho, anti-la antibodies. Check the medication regime. Take a detailed history of what drugs the patient has already been on. Look for other comorbidities in these patients, including diabetes, hypertension, and discuss on contraception issues if the patient is unlikely to become pregnant for the next time till the time she is into remission. So these are the absolute contraindications which we have to keep in mind whenever a patient comes to us and we must not let them become pregnant if they have any of these including severe lupus flare, a stroke within the last six months, pulmonary hypertension, moderate to severe heart failure, kidney failure, severe valvulopathy and uncontrolled hypertension or previous severe uh, early onset preeclampsia. So these absolute contraindications have to be kept in mind. Pathophysiology, I'll not go into details. Mostly it is the hormonal changes that occurs in the pregnancy which causes the flare. And what we need to also remember that there is a decreased level of anti-inflammatory steroids, elevated levels of uh, prolactin, which all lead to flare, intrapartum as well as the postpartum period. So once the patient decides to become pregnant, we need to have lab evaluation at the confirmation of pregnancy. And the basic tests include a complete blood count, a renal function test including determination of GFR, urine analysis and uh, UACR. At the same time, we must uh, look for the test for anti-rho, anti-la antibodies. Look for lupus anticoagulant. 
anti dsdna levels and the complement levels so if you do this basic test this will help you to uh, judge whether these patients can safely carry on the pregnancy at the same time you will also be able to guide on the disease activity but what we need to remember is the pregnancy and lupus they work both ways so one exacerbates the problem of the other and there are certain risk of lupus to pregnancy at the same time there are certain risk of pregnancy to the lupus and both have to be kept in mind while managing these patients so if the flare occurs during pregnancy this is the most common and most dangerous dreaded fear that we look for and they are not uncommon they usually occur in the first or second trimester but the best part is the flares are usually not severe they are mostly mild related mainly to the skin and the musculoskeletal system sometimes to the hematological system most of the time de novo uh, flare of kidney disease is very very uncommon almost to the less than 2% and the predictors for lupus flare is usually a disease activity at the time of conception and the presence of lupus nephritis in the past so if the patient has these two uh, things then you must think of a disease flare in the uh, intrapartum period so there may be a flare during pregnancy and the flare risk increases with the active disease in the last 6 months of pregnancy active disease at conception history of highly active disease prior to pregnancy and the most important and the most dreaded thing that we need to understand is the discontinuation of hydroxychloroquine so if a patient has discontinued hydroxychloroquine remember that she is likely to have a flare so this is very important message at the same time there are certain physiological changes that occur in pregnancy which might mimic to flare of lupus so the cloasma of pregnancy might similar look like malar rash there may be proteinuria secondary to uh, secondary to preeclampsia which could be uh, mimicking the protein urea due to lupus nephritis there can be preeclampsia which might mimic a lupus flare then thrombocytopenia of pregnancy due to help syndrome mimicking the itp or ttp in lupus flare and then the pedal edema and fluid accumulation in joints which could mimic the arthritis of sle so these mimics have to be taken into mind they must be evaluated well see them clinically judge them clinically before jumping on to a diagnosis these are the differentiating features between preeclampsia and lupus nephritis very important urine sediment if you have an active urine sediment it favors always and always lupus nephritis this is the most important differentiating feature apart from that you can use anti dsdna levels which are likely to rise with lupus flare then you can have uh, complement levels which will serially go on decreasing with lupus flare and of course the uric acid which rises with preeclampsia could be another differentiating feature so there are adverse pregnancy outcomes associated with lupus in the form of preeclampsia preterm labor thrombosis loss of fetus hematological complications iugr pregnancy loss and all these things have to be kept in mind whenever we discuss these issues with the patient at the same time these patients are prone to urinary tract infections gestational diabetes mellitus hypertension and premature rupture of membranes all complications of pregnancy have to be borne in mind while managing these patients now once these patients come for follow up we must uh, during the first trimesters you do a monthly platelet a cbc and in addition you must determine egfr measure the urinary albumin creatinine ratio do complement studies wherever possible do anti dsdna wherever possible especially in every trimester and if there is a difficulty in differentiating preeclampsia versus lupus nephritis then in very selective cases you might go for a renal biopsy though most of the time we defer so the key to management is an integrated team the team should consist of a rheumatologist or a physician who is active and trained in managing sle an obstetrician who is experienced with high risk care a pediatric cardiologist who can take care of fetal heart blocks and preferably a nephrologist should always be there in the team whenever there is a risk of lupus flare in the form of nephritis so this is a very busy slide from the international journal of women's health which summarizes the lupus management during pregnancy but i'll just show you the another slide which gives a very comprehensive way and it says that during the preconception go for clinical review drug review antibodies and avoid pregnancy wherever i have told all the contraindications once the patient is pregnant go for clinical review uh, look for disease activity look for disease manifestations check the drugs that the patient is taking look for antibodies and once the patient has delivered then again you need to do a clinical review check for antibodies look for drugs so 
the monitoring of the patient is throughout the pregnancy, right from preconception to postpartum, it is very, very essential. Now, there are certain management guidelines. This is ACR 2020 guidelines. The first line, it says, counsel women. So all women with SLE must be counseled regarding pregnancy, regarding the improved maternal and fetal outcome associated with entering pregnancy only during low disease activity or in remission. This is the first thing that you must do. And then there are tests, which I have already told, especially the tests uh, that are strongly recommended are the anti rho anti -la antibodies and the testing for antiphospholipid antibodies. At the same time, uh, in patients who have positive anti rho anti -la antibodies, you must go for fetal serial echocardiographic examination right, starting from 16 weeks up to 28 weeks. And if the patient has a past history of uh, congenital heart block in the previous pregnancy, then these uh, fetus need a weekly monitoring in the form of fetal echocardiography to look for complete heart block. Pharmacotherapy, most important drug is hydroxychloroquine. It should never be stopped. All pregnant patients should continue taking hydroxychloroquine. Low dose aspirin may be added in order to give more benefits. And those patients who po test positive for anti rho anti -la antibodies should continue taking HCQS because that is the only drug to prevent complete heart block. And for those patients who show first degree or second degree heart block, then these patients are preferably started on oral steroids so as to prevent the fetus from going into hydrops fetalis or complete heart block. The ULAR guidelines, again, they give a stress on hydroxychloroquine. They also mentioned that there are certain drugs which are to be avoided totally. One is mycophenolate, the other is cyclophosphamide, leflunamide, and methotrexate. So these are the four drugs which have to be completely avoided during pregnancy. So this is the list of drugs which are safe to use in lupus, uh, though we have to check the doses. And this is the table which says which drugs to be given preconception, which drugs need to be stopped prior to conception and which drugs are totally not compatible with pregnancy. This table is available in all standard books and we must keep it in mind whenever we manage patients of lupus with pregnancy. Now what happens when the patient develops renal disease? We must explain to them that there is an increased risk of fetal loss. These patients have to be managed with IV uh, pulse uh, steroids and sometimes if required in order to save the mother you might have to use even IV cyclophosphamide or IV rituximab. So these patients if they are mild disease then they can be pulled on with azathioprine or low dose corticosteroids. A brief word about neonatal lupus. This is a temporary condition which lasts around six to eight months after the birth. You, this is due to the passive transfer of the maternal autoantibodies into the fetus and that is why it wanes off it typically presents with either a congenital heart block or a lupus rash. Lupus rash is much more common than complete heart block and usually it is uncommon. Not more than 10% of the fetus will develop uh, neonatal lupus. Congenital heart block is dreaded. It occurs in 2% of newborns. The recurrence is high. If the previous pregnancy the fetus had a complete heart block, then there is a likelihood that this uh, pregnancy also the fetus will have a complete heart block. The mortality is almost to the tune of 20% and most of the pa patients who survive, 70% of these fetuses will require a pacemaker. And that is why you need to have a pediatric cardiologist in the team. Coming to management of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome with lupus, so we have three categories of patients. One could be asymptomatic carriers where the antibodies are positive but patients do not have any obstetric complications or thrombosis. So these patients usually just require uh, observation and a low dose aspirin can be used. For patients with obstetric antiphospholipid antibody syndrome where the antibodies are positive and there is a history of previous obstetric complication but without thrombosis. So these patients are treated with a combination of aspirin and prophylactic doses of heparin. But for those patients who have established antiphospholipid antibody syndrome with prior thrombosis, then these patients require therapeutic doses of heparin throughout the pregnancy and up to six weeks postpartum. So these uh, conditions have to be kept in mind. This is the most important slide that I would stress upon in the last one minute. The potential deficiencies and issues we still face in the adequate care of lupus pregnancies. And the areas that we need to work upon is the lack of risk stratification lack of multidisciplinary care, lack of dedicated lupus pregnancy units that we have, 
cost or access to investigations, cost of medications, poor access to fetal echocardiogram, lack of adequate awareness, lack of preconception counseling, poor adherence, unplanned pregnancy in our country, delayed diagnosis of lupus, delayed referral, and inadequate number of trained people with a lot of infections contributing to both fetal and maternal poor outcome. So in conclusion, a multidisciplinary team involving a rheumatologist or a trained physician with an obstetrician is highly desirable for management of lupus with pregnancy. The lead should be taken by the rheumatologist because he knows the pathophysiology of uh, lupus, which is very important for management of pregnancy. And the existing rheumatologist, it is ne necessary that they take an interest in managing pregnancy lupus because most of the time, the rheumatologist defer to manage these patients or they take more interest in arthritis than in reproductive rheumatology. So with that, I thank you all for a patient listening.